you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question on your own before moving on. We're going to begin this question by drawing in a line at the bottom edge of the roof and letting that represent a height of zero, just as a reference line. Now with that in mind, we can talk about the types of energy that are present in this situation. Beginning at the top of the roof, the ball starts from rest, so there is no kinetic energy. However, it certainly will have gravitational potential energy because it is located a certain height above our reference line. So we can denote the initial energy as U sub I. The U stands for the gravitational potential energy. Now, the ball rolls down the roof and reaches this height of zero, and as a result, it has no gravitational potential energy, but of course it would be moving at that point. And we would have to realize that because it's moving and rolling, there are two forms of kinetic energy present. There is the translational kinetic energy as well as the rotational kinetic energy. So it's these two forms of kinetic energy that are going to be present on the final side of our energy equation. So the left side represents the initial energy present and the right side is the final energy present. We can replace each form of energy with its respective expression. For the rotational kinetic energy, we have the term I, which represents the rotational inertia of the object. For a solid cylinder, it turns out that the value of I is one half times the mass times the radius squared. That would be an expression you would have to look up in a table that's probably found in the chapter. So we will substitute I with this expression here. We also want to note that the translational speed of the cylinder is equal to the radius of the cylinder times its angular speed. So we can replace the V in this equation with R times omega, the angular speed. Notice we can square the radius and omega in this expression here. Notice also that we can multiply the one halves. Now notice that these are actually like terms. They both contain an mr squared omega squared, so we can add them together. Continuing to simplify, because the mass appears on both sides of the equation, we can divide it out. We also need to come up with an expression for the height, and to do that, let's look back at the diagram. We've drawn a right triangle superimposed on the figure. This is the height that we're looking for. Hopefully that shows up in the picture. And we know that the hypotenuse of this right triangle is 6. Now the height is opposite the 30 degree angle, so we can take a look at sine. And of course, sine of 30 would equal the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, which is 6. So if we solve that for height, we can see that the height is just 6 sine of 30. And actually, we can go a little further. Sine of 30 is just 1 half, so it's 6 times a half, which is just 3. So something to keep in mind is that the height will be equal to 3. Now we need to solve this equation for omega since the question is asking us to find the angular speed. So we'll multiply both sides by 4 and then divide both sides by 3. Indeed, we can then divide by r squared. And then we'll take the square root of both sides. And then once we do that, we'll have just omega on the right side. We can now plug in all the known values. Notice that the radius was given in centimeters, so just make sure to convert that into meters. That'll be 0.10 meters. And when you crunch that down on your calculator, you should get omega approximately equaling 63. And the unit of angular speed is radians per second. So that would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Part B becomes a projectile motion question. What we have is an object being launched off the surface of the ramp with an initial velocity. We're going to figure that out in just a moment. And it's being launched at an angle of 30 degrees relative to the horizontal. So we can mark that angle as 30 degrees. Now we recall that translational speed is equal to the radius of an object multiplied by its angular speed. We know the radius is 0.10 meters and we figured out the angular speed. So we can actually figure out the initial speed with which the ball has as it flies off the roof. And that turns out to be roughly 6.3 meters per second. So with that translational speed in mind, we can begin to treat this as a standard projectile motion question. And that means we need to find the initial x component of the velocity and also the initial y component of the velocity. The x component is adjacent to the 30 degree angle, so we can use cosine. And the y component, of course, is opposite to the 30 degree angle, so we can use sine. We can arbitrarily assign 
a positive value to the leftward direction and a positive value for the downward direction. That just makes the calculations a little bit easier. We can turn to the y direction and what we're going to do is calculate the time that it takes for this ball to roll off the surface of the roof and hit the ground. Now, in fact, since this equation contains not just a t, but also a t squared, it's going to turn out to be a quadratic. So we would actually first have to subtract the y over to the other side of the equation. And of course, to solve a quadratic equation, we would have to use the quadratic formula. This value right here would be our a, right here would be the b, and the negative y would be our c. Now, of course, here is the quadratic formula. We would have to plug in the a, the b, and the c into that and then simplify. And after simplifying, we do obtain this expression for the time. I realize I skipped a step there, so if you'd like to see that work, please let me know and I would describe it in the comments. Notice we're only taking the positive root because the negative one would return a negative time and we don't want negative times in these questions. So after we plug in the initial velocity in the y direction, which remember was 6.3 sine of 30, so that's going to go in right for v, 0, y, both there and here. g is 9.8, h was 5. We can plug in and we obtain approximately 0.74 seconds. So that's how long it's going to take for the cylinder to roll off the roof and hit the ground. Turning next to the x direction, we have the following equation. And of course, in the x direction, there is no acceleration because there's no force acting in the x direction. So we can cancel that term out. And we now simply have to plug in to this equation the initial velocity in the x direction, which recall was the 6.3 cos 30, and then the time that we just calculated. And when we crunch that down, we get approximately 4 meters for the displacement in the x direction. And that would indeed be how far horizontally from the roof's edge the cylinder hits the level ground. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.